Christ. The text for today's message is John 11, uh, 1 through 45, especially verses 4 and 13. When Jesus hears that his friend Lazarus is deathly sick, he does something that normal people wouldn't do. He tarries. He delays. Why does he delay? How is it possible that someone who loves so much and can do such great things, even to heal a blind man from his blindness, how can he restrain himself and keep away? In our text for today, when he is asked how it is that he can delay, Jesus simply responds, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that that God's Son may be glorified through it. For God's glory, so that God's Son might be glorified? What is this about? This seems to be a very selfish thing for God to do. He is permitting the suffering and death of a person for His glory. It just doesn't seem right. The other strange thing coming out of this text comes when Jesus refers to Lazarus' death, but he calls it sleep. What does Jesus mean by saying that our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him? He says this when we know by hindsight that Lazarus has already died. When Jesus says these words, his disciples rebuke him. They know that as they get closer and closer to Jerusalem, their lives become more and more in peril because of the way the Jewish leaders are reacting to Jesus. They see what is happening over the course of Christ's ministry. These Jewish leaders have become more and more belligerent toward Jesus, and they are intent on destroying him, killing him. The disciples, they don't want to go. So when Jesus says, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, the disciples in their logic say, well, if he's only asleep, then he will recover. He's going to wake up. This makes sense. If he's only sleeping, then there's no rush. We don't need to risk our lives to get there. The disciples, they are afraid. They are afraid that they themselves will die. To an outsider or a non-Christian and to the disciples, who had not yet experienced the pain of the death of Christ turned to joy to those who have had little or no experience with faith, Jesus' words seem very strange or maybe even deceptive. Some sicknesses lead to death, others do not. Sicknesses like cancer, pneumonia, heart disease, asthma, the flu, and AIDS, they lead to physical death. These are terrible, terrible diseases which sometimes wrench our loved ones from our arms. We cry over the death of our loved ones. We cry because we will miss them. We cry because deep down inside we know that one day we are going to follow them. We cry because physical death is something that is unnatural, though it has become normal. For Jesus to act in such a seemingly cavalier manner, it makes us wonder. Lazarus died. His sickness led to death. Sleep is sleep. Death is death. From, from sleep one awakens and is rested. The body still functions. From death no one awakes. The body ceases to function and eventually will cease to exist at all as a result of the decay. We don't like the reality, but the truth is the reality. Mary and Martha were crying over the loss of their brother. Sickness wrecked havoc on his body, and it killed him. There was the wrapping of the body. There was the performance of the cleansing rites related to the handling of a dead body in the Jewish culture and by law. There was a funeral, a burial, and a closing of the tomb, and there were four days. Jesus didn't make it to the funeral. A good friend of the family stayed away. All of these strangers came from Jerusalem to bring comfort, but Jesus didn't come. How hurtful this was. How difficult the feelings of abandonment. 
Jesus healed the sickness of many strangers, but he would not come and heal the sickness of one who loved him so much for God's glory, so that God's Son might be glorified? What's this about? In his freaky, unusual, and God Almighty way, our Lord is communicating with his disciples, with Mary and Martha, with the Jews who were present for the funeral, and the comforting of the sisters, and us, in the context of the hardness of this life. He has taken the common experience of physical death and using it to show forth the reality of life. Physical sickness leads to physical death. But physical death for a believer, for someone who knows and trusts in Jesus Christ, is not a permanent condition. Jesus is teaching this. It is sleep. It is impermanent. It is impermanent because in Christ the power of there is the power of resurrection. In Christ there is victory over death. Christ's words do beg a question. What sickness truly does lead to death? There is only one. It is what has led to death from the beginning of sin and sinfulness. It is the placement of faith and trust and belief in something other than the one true God. Adam and Eve placed their trust in Satan's lies, a piece of fruit, and ultimately themselves. Instead of looking to the one true God and giving assent to his lordship, they attempted to take for themselves the power of God to be like God, knowing good and evil. God said it, and it's true. If you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden, you will surely die. It is the same sickness that led the people of Israel to make a god of gold and worship it. Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days, and the people got restless, and they wanted a god that they could see and hold and handle, like the other nations. They put their faith and trust in a very small thing. It was a thing that was made with creature hands. It was not the creator of the universe. How do you measure up? Where have you placed your trust? Do you have the disease that leads to death? Where is your faith? Indeed, we are told in Ephesians that in our sin and sinfulness we are dead. Dead people don't make themselves alive. But God does it. He makes dead people to live. Jesus accomplished the work that he was given to do in the most timely manner. He did it so that all who believe in him might have everlasting life. Jesus has made you alive again. He has done this by giving to you an alien faith. It is not a faith that you created or that bubbled up inside of you is something that he gifted you with. It is not a faith which you possess or the object of your choosing. It is the faith that God gives to you. And it is a faith that trusts in the one true God, the creator of the universe, your creator. You who believe have a faith that saves you. It is a big faith. Just as Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead physically, he has already raised you from the dead spiritually. In your baptism, the Lord has called out your name. He has called you forth from the tomb. And by his command and according to his strength, you have come out. Jesus has given you the resurrection from the dead. And in your salvation, God is glorified. God has chosen to love you. And he relishes everything. He relishes you, your safety, your life. It cost a dear price. But God decided that you are worth the price. God's glory. It is in the shedding of blood. The shedding of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that you might live. As Christians who live with the New Testament revelation... We have a little perspective. 
We can look at this story and realize that Jesus was dealing with the spiritual using physical language. Through Jesus, we know that physical death is something that is temporary. We know that because of faith, death is really only sleep. We know that there will be a resurrection from the dead and that there will be life everlasting. We know that this is the glory of God, that while we were still his enemies, Christ died. For you. The glory of God and the glory of the Son of God is found in the redemption of people. When people come to believe and are saved, when people come to faith and trust the Lord, when people are connected to Christ in His death, in His burial, and in His resurrection, then God is glorified. God's word has been spoken in your life. Because God has come to you and shown you His love and placed in you His life-giving Spirit, you no longer have the disease that leads to death. Sure, you will get sick. Yes, someday a sickness or injury may cause your body to cease to function, to die, but you no longer have the disease that leads to death. Your death, the death of your loved ones who die in faith, it is only a sleep. It's a temporary situation that will last only as long as our Lord determines is necessary for all of his people to come into the kingdom. When the kingdom of God is complete, then he will come. And just as Jesus raised Lazarus from his physical sleep, so too he will raise you from your sleep. The disciples were afraid on the way to Jerusalem. They didn't want their teacher to be stoned. The disciples were afraid on the way to Jerusalem. They didn't want to die. Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem in order to die. It is in his death that death is in fact defeated. Without Christ's death, there would be no forgiveness. Without Christ's death, there would be no faith. Without Christ's death, there would be no comfort at life's end. Because of Christ's death and resurrection, you no longer need to fear death. Death is simply sleep. It is not permanent. You and all believers who have been raised from death will also be made new again. And there is no fear. For as you enter into the new Jerusalem, as you enter into heaven and paradise upon the resurrection from the dead, you are safe. You are alive in Christ. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.